Good day, junior tuckies. I'm going to teach a lesson today for exam preparation. This lesson is going to look at the literature essay. Now, I know this can be one of the most challenging sections of English. However, I do not want you to panic. I'm going to teach you a recipe to create a clear and concise literature essay. As always, we need to ask ourselves the question, what is a literature essay? A literature essay is an in-depth analysis of text, whether it be a play or a novel. We need to look for the deeper meaning within the text. Why do the characters do the things they do? Why do the authors write the way that they do in texts? And how do we see this as the reader? We are going to make use of your critical analysis skills when creating a literature essay. You can think of a literature essay as one of the most formal pieces of writing that you'll ever do. This means that you need to use all of your analysis skills that you have. Your marker knows the plots of the play or novel that you're doing, grade 11s. You don't need to retell the story. The marker wants you to engage with the text rather than retell the story. Let's look at the next slide. Let's look at things to remember when writing a literature essay. I have put this point in bold because it is so important. Do not retell the story. As I said in the previous slide, we want you to engage with the text. Remember, the tone is formal. Imagine you're writing a report addressed to our president, Cyril Ramaphosa. You cannot use slang, you cannot use contractions, or colloquial language. It is formal. Remember, you must write in present tense. The characters in your novel or play are not real people. They do not have a past and they do not have a future. So, their reality is right here, right now. They exist right here and right now. Always write in third person. No I or me. When you use first person or I and me, it sounds as if the essay is all your own opinion. Rather say the reader will find or the reader will see. Also note that you need to write your essay in chronological order from the first example in your text to the last example in your text. Always replace he or she with the characters' names. Let's look at an example. He tells Juliet he loves her. Who is he? If you don't know, your mark is not going to know. The correct way to state it would be, Romeo tells Juliet that he loves her. Now we have a better understanding of who is being spoken about in the sentence. You will know where to use your pronouns, but remember, you need to use the characters' names. Let's move on to the first step on the next slide. How to organise your literature essay. Step one. Step one is to underline or highlight your question. This is our first step in the recipe. Remember grade 11s. We are not all doing the same novels or dramas and plays. This recipe, you can add in the information from your novel or play. That is why it's a recipe. Now, the first step underlining or highlighting your question sounds juvenile or immature. However, this helps you stay on topic and understand what the question actually wants you to do. It also helps in the analysis process and staying focused. Now, let's look at the key words we need to look for in our question. The first one is direction words. What words are pointing us in a particular direction or down a certain path? Number two, knowledge words. What words do we have to have knowledge of in order to write the essay? And then finally, restriction words. What words are restricting us from writing this essay? Let's look at an example on the next slide. Once again, reminding you, grade 11s, we do not all do the same novel or play. 
This recipe can be applied to any novel or play. Just use the steps and insert your information about your novel. Let's look at this question. Physically, they are quite different. Daisy is referred to as light and glamorous, while Myrtle is characterized as an overweight and gaudy in appearance. By demonstrating their distinct physical differences, Fitzgerald allows us to play favorites with Daisy, even though two women do share a number of similarities in terms of their actual lives. In F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby, the author creates two opposing characters that are in some ways alike. In a literature essay of 350 to 400 words in length, compare the two characters of Daisy and Myrtle. Now, that was a long question. It is intricate and complicated and can be easily confused. This is why I've implemented these steps. Now, let's look at our keywords in this question. Firstly, direction words. What words are leading us down a specific path? So, we need to compare the two characters of Daisy and Myrtle. Please note, grade 11s, that you can double or even triple highlight a part of the sentence. We also need to look at how they are opposites and how these characters are also alike. Then, knowledge words. What words do we have to have knowledge of in order to write this essay? We definitely need to know about the Great Gatsby. We also need to know about the characters of Daisy and Myrtle, how they're opposites, but also alike. Now, we need to look at restricting words. What words are restricting us? Of course, the type of essay, the literature essay, our word counts of 350 to 400 words, and also, grade 11s, we need to write about Daisy and Myrtle. We cannot write about other characters in our novel. So, by using this step one, we now know that we need to focus on Daisy and Myrtle as characters and how they are opposites but also alike. Let's look at an example on the next slide. Our next step is step two, brainstorming. Brainstorming helps us organize all of our knowledge of the novel or play. You must brainstorm all the things you remember about the topic. This is important because you will use this brainstorming later on in your planning. It is also important to note that you may realize that a specific example or point in your brainstorming does not fit into the topic, or maybe you don't know enough about the point to elaborate on it. This step in the planning process is imperative because it is the foundation moving on. Let's look at an example on the next slide. Step two continued the example. Remember, grade 11s, you can add in your information about your novel or play into the steps. We need to look at Daisy and Myrtle as characters, and this is why I have placed them in the middle of my brainstorming. On the right-hand side, I've looked at Daisy. Daisy, the way that she's different from Myrtle is the fact that she's born into extreme wealth. However, Myrtle is born into poverty. The ways in which Daisy and Myrtle are actually alike is that they're both married to someone that they don't love. They are also both in love with the man that is not their husband. Daisy is in love with Gatsby, while Myrtle is in love with Tom. Now remember, grade 11s, you need to put down every single thing you know about your novel or play. I've put this into a concise planning because I know that I need to move on. However, if you do put down everything you remember, you will know that each point you can elaborate on or maybe another point you cannot. This is an important part of the planning process because each point that we've made underneath the character's name will form part of your essay. It will become a paragraph or a peel 
in your essay. Now, let's look at step three. Step three is the introduction. By doing the introduction early on in your planning, you will always be able to refer back to it if you get stuck. The introduction is a summary of the question or topic. We also have a recipe of how this can be applied to any novel or play. In the play or novel, remember you need to underline the name as this indicates that it's a name of a novel or play. If we were typing this out, it would be typed out in italics. You cannot write in italics. So what do we do? We need to underline the name of the novel or play. Then we say by the author or playwright. And we continue in our introduction to sum up the question or the themes. However, we're not done. We need to make our thesis statement. You can start your thesis statement by saying, this literature essay will discuss and the statement you're going to make. Remember, the introduction is to sum up your question, your topic. Let's look at an example on the next slide. Step three example. Remember, grade 11s, you can put your information about your novel or play into this recipe. Let's look at an example of an introduction. In F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby, the characters of Daisy and Myrtle are opposites but somewhat alike. This literature essay will discuss how these two characters oppose one another, as well as what the two characters have in common. This introduction has summed up the question and stated to the marker what they will see in the essay. Let's move on to the next step. Step four, peel or the body of your essay. As you've been writing essays for quite some time now, you will know that the body of your essay is the meat of your essay, where you'll find majority of your analysis. Each point from your brainstorming will be organized into a logical manner using the peel method. Each paragraph or peel should contain one main idea. Try use quotations to elevate your writing. If you cannot remember a quote exactly, rather paraphrase the quotation you're thinking of. Peel stands for point, example, explain and link. On the next slide, I'm going to go into more depth about what peel means. Step four, peel continued. As we know, peel stands for point, example, explain, link. This method is used to organize all of your thoughts and ideas about the question. Let's look at an in-depth analysis. Point. You will find this in your brainstorming. Each point in your brainstorming will form as the point of a new peel. Example. Grade 11s. This is the only time you're allowed to retell the story. You are giving a direct example and usually a direct quotation from the novel. Always begin this part of Peel with, in the chapter 2, so on and so on and so on happens. Then we move on to explain. Now, we do not want you to explain your points and your example. We want you to explain how the point and their example links back to our question or to our topic. Then finally, we get the link. We always need to link back to the topic. You can use thus or so when starting your link. Let's look at an example on the next slide. Step four example. I am taking a point from the brainstorming about Daisy. The point. Daisy is married to a man that she does not love. This is short, this is sweet, this is concise. An example. We need to think to ourselves, where in the novel can I find an example of how Daisy is no longer in love with Tom? 
So I begin my example by saying, in chapter one of the novel, Daisy describes to Nick how Tom was absent for the birth of their daughter. She describes the situation with Tom saying, well, she was less than an hour old and Tom was God knows where. I have included an quote or quotation over here to further enhance my writing. I'm giving further evidence. This is a helpful and a must do to obtain a creative and clearly put out literature essay. Now we go on to explain. Remember, we are not explaining the points and their example. We are explaining how the points and how the example are connected to my topic. This quote shows the reader how Daisy no longer has faith in Tom. Tom has mistreated Daisy in the past and she no longer loves him. Now let's move on to the link. Remember, the link must refer back to the topic. Thus, the reader is able to see that Daisy is married to a man that she does not love. Now, you can practice all the different points of our peel of the brainstorming on your own. Use the recipe, use the steps, and you will be successful. A top tip over here, grade 11s, is practice makes perfect. The final step in this process is the conclusion. The conclusion sums up what was in your essay. A way to create a conclusion is to mirror your introduction by flipping the information. Remember, you also never add any new information into your conclusion. Let's look at an example. In the novel, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, the characters of Daisy and Myrtle are opposites. However, they also are alike. This is seen through the evidence given in this essay. Remember, no new information. I've repeated this twice because this is something that often happens. Remember, your conclusion is summing up what was in your essay. If you do add information or new information, it means that you've not tackled this in your body of your essay and you will be marked down. Use this recipe in the future. And now let's look at some top tips on the next slide. Top tips. Always write in third person or rather use the phrase the reader will find. No personal pronouns like I or me. When you're writing an essay and you use I or me, it sounds like it is your own opinion. Always write in present tense. The characters are not real, so they exist right here, right now. You must know how to spell character names. This is incredibly important because your marker will mark you down if the names are not spelt correctly. Planning is essential. If you do not plan, your teacher will know. This type of essay is very intricate and it needs extensive planning to be successful. Use the steps. These steps have been formulated to help you plan an essay that has a clear line of arguments. Remember to write in chronological order. Write your essay in such a way that your examples are from the beginning of the novel to the end. Now, let's move on to our final slide. I hope this lesson helps you along the way to writing some awesome literature essays. Remember, practice makes perfect. The next chapter that will be covered is setting as a character.